I thought I would uh, make a little video of this is the game ranch parking lot, the old game ranch. Uh, it was over here on the left behind that fence and it was here for many years and then I don't know if the park just got tired of having a game ranch but anyway they moved it outside the park and it's now known as the Yellow River Game Ranch and this parking lot is where I do a lot of my staging for my runs out here at Stone Mountain. I uh, park back there you can see that Saturn view that's my car uh, park there the one shady spot in the afternoon and then if I've been working or something and I have to change clothes a little restroom over here behind the fence you can get to I'm gonna go over there and get a drink of water But this, uh, this is a good location to start from because you, you, you can park there and it's usually not crowded like it's well, I don't know what time it is it's about 4.30 in the afternoon you can see how many cars were parked there around 5.30 they start packing them in because people get off work and come out here if you're wondering what I'm doing I'm going to that water fountain I just got through doing a four mile run and uh, I What I did is I, I ran about a mile and four tenths out and then there's some hills out on the back side of the mountain. And I did officially about eight hills. I think I did 10 because it took me a while to figure out how to do the laps on my watch because I had put a pre-programmed workout in there of 3.6 miles. And when I hit the lap button, it stopped the workout. So then I had to resume and it kind of had me starting over. I mean, it kept, it, it kept the distance and everything, but it just went back to the basic run program. So I, uh, did eight official hills using my stopwatch after I got things straightened out. I only did about uh, probably a maximum of 45 seconds up and then walk part way down, jog part way down, and then went back up again. Uh, about 10 total times, eight that I actually did splits on. And I did the split, I start at the bottom, run to the top, turn around and go back down, and then start the next split at the start of going back up again. So the total split had my run up and my walk back down, or my recovery down, because I jogged down some of them. And then after that, I just chugged along slowly until I got in a little over four miles and finished my run. So now I'm doing this walk to hopefully I'm uh, recording a short film here. I don't know if I am or not. We'll find out. What I'm going to do is turn to the left up here by that mailbox and go up. There's a service road here that goes up to the walk-up trail. I'm not really going to go on the walk-up trail. I'm going to go on the regular Cherokee Trail.
Hi. Okay, see we're going uphill here. And if I continue to cross the railroad track and on up, this road would kind of curve around and run into the walk-up trail. And it goes across the walk-up trail and then kind of zigzags around the mountain. Or uh, that's how they get supplies up to the top of the truck. The walk-up trails are direct straight up and the uh, surface roads kind of a, once you get over the other side, it's a gravel trail, similar to this thing here, it's a gravel road. Now this is, this right here is the Cherokee Trail I'm turning on. And I thought I'd go down it a little ways, show you what it's like. You've probably seen this before in some of my uh, stuff. I don't know. Anyway, we'll go down here a little ways to the to the rocks probably, because there's a uh, the part of the mountain uh, is exposed. You have to go across the slab of rock to get back into the woods on the other side. So we'll go that far and, and that'll about be it for that segment. But as you can see, it's spring now and uh, the green's coming out. which is nice. Of course, my theory when I'm running trails is don't touch anything green because it could be poisonous. It'd be poison ivy, poison oak, poison whatever, you know. So I just kind of don't touch anything green when I'm trail running. So you can see a lot of roots and rocks around here. And I've spent many hours running around the mountain on this trail. In this section, once I go across the, the main slab up here, it gets pretty, pretty bad as far as roots and stuff. We'll go that far and I'll show you what it looks like. And then that'll be the end of it. I don't want to bore you to death with this little video. I don't know. Looks like I've been recording for about eight minutes, so I'll probably have to whack out some sections to get it to uh, fit to the size I want it to. You can see we're coming up to some of the rock here. This isn't the major exposed rock I'm talking about. This is just rock. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's it's part of the mountain, but and it's it's the beginning of the uh, part that I was talking about. That's just plain rock right up the mountain. I'm thinking about the fastest I've run this loop on the trail back in the old days before I was an old geezer. It was about 56 to 58 minutes and it's around we counted it as six miles back then that was before gps's since i got a gps and i went out and ran on the trail you know it, it comes out it's really around 5.8 so basically if i was running a 58 minute loop i was running about a 10 minute pace on this trail which is okay because back then when I was running on the road, I was running a little under nine, so when I trained 846, five mile loop, something like that, pace wise. And I was running 630s in races, so running on this trail helped with strength, I believe. And I think over the years, this trail's really deteriorated it didn't used to have as many rocks sticking out. I think 
so many people have run and walked on this trail that just kind of worn it down. I hope this camera is set up to where uh, I'm not pointing at the ground or something where you can't see anything. Okay, this right here is the outcropping I'm talking about. See all that? Yeah. And you kind of go across here at a slant, which is... I have... I got a pair of Hoka trail shoes, Rapa Nui trails. And the first day I ever wore them, I came across this thing and it was wet. And I busted my butt on this thing. I hit these these wet sections here. Well, it was much wetter than this. This is just runoff from other days, but it had been, you know, had been raining and the whole the whole thing was wet. And of course, it was also in the winter, so there was probably a little bit of ice mixed in. And I slid and I landed right on my hip and hurt. God. Yeah, see these roots here? This is uh not the ideal section of running right here. This is what I guess you would call a technical section, huh? That's what I'd call it. And it didn't used to be this bad. All these roots used to be covered over with topsoil and stuff. They weren't so bare. But now they're pretty bad. And you come out down here. and Then from here on, the trail's not too bad. And there's a section over on the back side of the mountain that's pretty ratty too. But, but overall, once you've gone across this, and you go down in here into the woods again, I'll end up going all the way around this trail showing you this thing. Once you get past these roots right here, it kind of smooths out. And it's just a nice run back in here. So, that's my little section that I was going to show you over the day. And I'll uh, turn this thing off and see you later.